Okay, hi everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Legally Couture. This is Erin and I have Kelly Wilson with me today as a guest. You wanna say hi, hi to everyone? <laughs> So if you don't know, Callie is in her last year of law school right now. She goes to law school in New York. So she is here today to talk to us about law school in New York City, her life, everything that you guys want to know, we're going to talk about. <laughs> yes. yes. So we're going to start off just so you all know kind of the gist of the episode. So if you care more about the law school stuff, it's going to be first half, second half, we're going to gear more towards everything else that you guys want to know. So to start off, we'll just go like basics what made you want to go to law school Kelly it's like I never had like a direct like path I guess so when I was really little I like wanted to be a lawyer thought it was a cool idea don't know where that even came from because I don't have any family members who are a lawyer I just like <laughs> thought it sounded cool but then I have like this vivid memory of being I think it was like sixth grade I was on like a field trip somewhere on a school bus and like I was talking about like wanting to be a lawyer one day and then like this kid on the bus was like my dad's a lawyer and he's miserable and he hates his life and he says it's the <laughs> biggest regret ever so then I was like okay I'm gonna cross that one off the list and then like I went into high school and um I basically like I did not know what I was going through in high school but like I had always gotten good grades until high school I kind of went through this phase where like I watched a lot of UK skins for anyone who's watched skins. I like really wanted to be like the characters in skins who just did not care at all. So I would get bad grades literally on purpose. I would like skip class. Like I made any bad decision you can possibly think of making. I definitely did it. And then I had like no options for colleges when I was applying because oh I probably God. graduated high school with like, I don't know. I have no idea what my GPA was, but like, it was bad. Like really probably like 2.0 or something. It was really bad. <laughs> so then I like went to this college, like in the middle of the woods, in the middle of nowhere, hated my life, had like a full blown mental breakdown at the end of the year. Cause it was just like a, not like a normal party school. It was like literally Monday through Sunday, like party. And like the lifestyle was just really <laughs> intense there. Oh my God. And so yeah, it was really bad. So I ended up um, transferring, thank God. And I transferred to Suffolk in Boston. And like, I was a pre-med major for the first like three hours of my time at Suffolk. The first three <laughs> hours. <laughs> yeah. And so I went, cause I'm so bad at math and science. I have no idea what I was thinking. I just like didn't know what to do. And you have to declare a major sophomore year. So I was like, I guess pre-med. And then I went to my first chem class and they were like, if you don't know this and this and this, you should leave. And I left in tears and ran to my advisor. And I was like, I guess I'll be like an English major or something. I don't know. And she was like, try our pre-law program. And I did. And I was like, okay, full circle, lawyer idea again. And then I just kind of didn't think about what I was doing. And here we are. So that's so funny. You were like, yeah. I went in as pre-med for three hours. I, I don't know what I was thinking because like math and science, I can't like at yeah. all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so pre-med would definitely not be for you. Absolutely not. I would not have survived. I would have failed out of it. No, I had friends in undergrad that were pre-med. And if you don't actually like enjoy science and math, you can't. You do would it. have been so miserable. That would have been a terrible three yeah. years of your life. It would have been so. And then if I really like somehow went on to med school, which I don't think would have happened, oh like if it been, <laughs> like I would just be even more miserable than like law oh school god. makes me. Oh yeah. my god, that's so true. And med school is so long. Like that would have been that would have been know. such a long time to be miserable. <laughs> yeah, literally. It would have been bad. Oh my goodness. Well, I'm happy you didn't go through with that then because that would have been a bad time. <laughs> me too. Very happy. Yeah. And then we wouldn't have you on here either. I probably wouldn't that's have found very, you. That's very true. That's so now we get to true. talk to you. Yes, perfect. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. So going off of that, once you decided you wanted to do law, some people were asking questions about what the application process was like for you and your LSAT studying. So we can guess, I guess we'll start with LSAT studying since that kind of comes first. Okay. Do, yeah. So, so like, did you do a course self-study that kind of yeah. vibe? I did a course. Um, I think I could not have done it without a course. I used Kaplan. I always tell people like definitely think about if you want to take a course like I think it's a really good investment personally because 
I guess it depends on how you learn too. But like for me, I couldn't just sit down and like teach myself. I'm sure it's possible. And like, I think it's important to like say like there are free, like really good free resources. I think like Seven Stage has like really good stuff and like YouTube yeah. videos, you can like look up like how to do stuff. So we could do it definitely. Yeah. But I did Kaplan. Um, I did my, when did I, so I started it my like last, like at the very beginning of spring semester. So like in like January, February, and okay. then it, that went up until I think June, I was like ready to take the LSAT in June or May. I don't know mm-hmm. when one of those months and then I just like didn't feel ready the nice thing about Kaplan is like you can still have access to the materials for like a few more months after so like I just literally re-watched every single um Mm -hmm. video and then like watched YouTube videos and did practice tests and I I always tell people I feel like doing time practice tests is the best thing you can do because Mm -hmm. at least I think because I like you kind of get how to do everything by a certain point but it's really just like the Mm -hmm. time crunches yeah hardest thing and I think I struggled with logic games the most so at the very end I was like because I feel like it's close to math I mean it's not really math that's the closest you can get to yeah so that's why my brain was like I can't do this so I Mm -hmm. focused more on um not reading comp what was the other one Uh, Uh, logical logical reasoning yeah so I got I guess they don't have two sections of logical reasoning on the LSAT anymore they did when I was there Okay, yeah. so I got lucky and like really focused on that. And like, I think that helped my score, but yeah. Yeah. I don't anymore. Yeah, no, I agree. I took a course too. I did the power score one and it was the same way that you get to keep using the material for months. Yeah. So after I finished my course, I did take the LSAT right after, but I didn't get the score I wanted. Yeah. So it was nice to be able to keep using the materials to study yeah. for like my next try at it. But, no, so, I think courses like if you are willing to invest in them yeah they're like really helpful they're so worth it and honestly you might be investing like a thousand or like two thousand up front on it but yeah. in the end it can get you more scholarship money that's where, very like, very true like totally a lot no more scholarship reason. yeah that's yeah. very true I didn't even ever think about it that way but that's a very good point yeah yeah that's how I convinced myself to spend the money on it I was like yeah. what if I pay, I can get more scholarship money. That's so it'll be, yeah, yeah, yes, less student debt. <laughs> yeah. So we both agree then if you can afford a course and you're willing to pay. Yeah. hundred percent. Go for it. Just because it helps you. I felt that it helped me like stay on track of studying. Oh, if I was doing it by myself, like I would just, that's why I failed the MPRE and have to redo it because like I was just I did not study like I have no yeah I don't have the drive to make myself like I mean I guess I kind of do but like not really so yeah yeah no it's hard that's totally fair going off of that actually not having the drive people did ask what you do when you're not motivated to like study so we'll yeah. kind of like jump into that here I personally have a big philosophy that like if you are having a day like where you feel like you can't study and you don't want to study, even if like you're really behind already, I just like will not study because I've learned this the hard way for me, especially like 1L, like when I would get really behind or like not even behind, but like if I had a day where I felt really overwhelmed and tried to make myself read, I would never end up like I would either just not soak anything in and just like skim and like mindlessly flip the pages and take no notes and pretend I read or I would like read like two pages until I literally like felt like I was gonna have a full mental breakdown and then I would like start crying and then just like try to take a break but I would feel guilty for taking a break so like my thing now is like when I don't feel motivated I will like give myself I mean if I don't have a full day I'll give myself like I'll say okay for an hour and a half you can like lay down and like watch like YouTube videos or something Mm -hmm. um but I think when I really like can't do that if there are times I can't do that what really helps me is just doing like Pomodoro method kind of things like mm-hmm. studying for I usually do like 40 minutes on and then I'll do like a timed I do timed breaks too because if you don't time your breaks or at least if I don't time my breaks it'll be like 40 minutes later and then I'm like <laughs> okay so I will time my breaks too and I like listening to study music um on like YouTube I'll just like look up playlists and that really helps me like, <laughs> get the focus too <laughs> yeah that would be the dog <laughs> <laughs> yes um yeah I agree with that I like the Pomodoro style thing too yeah um but definitely I agree if you cannot like if you're not actually absorbing it you have to take some sort of break no matter how long it is 100 or you're not gonna learn it anyway so it's just no. a waste of your time 
and you're stressed about not learning it. Exactly. So there's just no point. Yeah. Yeah. So I love that you advocate for that because yeah. that's important. You got to give your brain a break. Otherwise you're not going to learn. Or like there's nothing there, sweet thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Perfect. So actually back to the application cycle. Then. So um, people wanted to know how your application cycle was like, because I know like the one I applied in and what people are applying in this year. Yeah. It was like 10 times more applicants than any other year. Really? So that's super fun for us. Mm -hmm. But so people were wondering what your application cycle was like, and I guess how many schools you applied to kind of what your method was in app applications. I feel like I have partially kind of blocked it out of my, my mind now, That's but fair. It's terrible. Um, <laughs> it's a terrible time. But I think I definitely I applied to probably 10 ish schools, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as like application process, like time between hearing back or like I really don't. So I applied for. Mm -hmm the school I go to now because that's the one I wanted to go to most yeah. I applied early is it early admissions is that what it's called when you apply like early and if they accept you like you yeah yeah I think that's early admit or early decision early one decision that's what it's yeah. called early decision um so I applied early decision and I heard back it was actually really nerve-wracking because I had been checking the application like every day and I think that this was like two months after I had applied because I, I applied mm -hmm. and like November I know you don't have yeah. to apply that early but I think especially now if so many people are applying it definitely helps because there's like a certain yeah. point where they'll stop looking at applications so I think yeah the you can apply the better but when I called my school because I looked at my application it was just gone and I was like what happened and like I was having a yeah. panic attack and they were like oh we're actually reviewing it right now like well you'll hear back oh. in 30 minutes and I was like for that next 30 minutes just panicking oh my god that's <laughs> like, stressful I had to like sit and wait and then I got in which was Good, but that was really stressful. But I think, yeah, I found out in late December, or early January when I got in. Oh, so. that's not bad at all. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think this past year, like I didn't hear back from some schools until like April. I heard back from one really? school after I had to put a deposit down somewhere. Really? So, that's yeah. Crazy. Yeah. That's so late. I know. I know. I think it was just because of how many people applied. So they had so many applications they were kind of holding to, yeah. to wait and see if people didn't put deposits down, I believe, so they could offer more seats. Yeah. But I don't know why they wouldn't just wait list instead of like, I know, just in limbo. No, that so, really, that sucks. So that really, bizarre. I can't imagine. That's agonizing, especially if it's like your top school that you're waiting for. One of them was my top school. <laughs> my God. When did you apply? Did you also apply like in fall or? Yeah, I applied. Um, I want to say I got at least most of my applications out in November. Oh, wow. But, that is insane. Yeah, it was. I'll just name it. It was NYU. I didn't hear back until like the first week of May. Oh, my God. It's like, are you kidding that is me? so bad. Yeah. Wow. So then at that point, I was like, I'm just not going there. I was like, yeah, I'm just yeah. like probably not getting in. But I don't know why they made us wait. That's so bad. That's yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm um, happy yours went better. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I got lucky, but yeah. 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 So that's what a lot of people are dealing with now, though, I think because of the like boom in applications. Uh, well, so. probably anyone going through that, I'm sorry. That sucks. Like, that really yeah. sucks. It does suck. <laughs> but that's okay. It is what it is. I'm in law school now. All the people applying now, you will be where you're meant to be. Exactly. A hundred percent. Everything happens for a reason and you'll go to the place yes. you're supposed to be. Yeah. So any of you waiting to hear back now, stop worrying about it. You will hear back from everyone. It'll be good. Yes. Just relax. Yes. It's just waiting and there's nothing you can do. Literally. That is something I really struggle with, but that's very true. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So that's like your whole application cycle, I guess. And yeah. I was going to ask how you picked your school. Um, do you want to talk a bit about that? Like, did you know you yeah. wanted to stay in New York? So I definitely, so I was in school in Boston in undergrad and I just felt like, I think Boston is like a great place to go to college undergrad. Cause it's literally just like a city of college students basically. But I was sort of feeling very like, I don't know, stuck there, I guess. So I knew like for sure I did not, like I knew I wanted to go to law school, um, in New York. And I like looked like the way I chose my school was like 
it had like a certain program that like I really like was interested in as well yeah. um so that like pushed me towards that school as well and like also like of course the price comes into it too and like who gives scholarships and who doesn't mm-hmm. because but I mean, no matter what, no matter the scholarship, still in massive debt, but that is out of sight, out of mind right now. But a later yeah. problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I think just looking at like location, um, I know like my parents always tell me like, you shouldn't look at location, you should just look at the school and the scholarship. But I do think like location is important mm-hmm. too. Well, I, especially law school is different because like if you plan on practicing in the state, you should probably... Yeah go to law school in that state but yeah yeah, I don't know location was a big one for me maybe that's not for everyone but for me it was important yeah for me it was the big one too like I only picked three cities to apply in New York Boston and DC but I knew I ultimately wanted to be in New York if I got a good offer here um and if you do want to practice in a specific state you should go to law school in that state if you can so I feel like for most people it does come into play with law school more so than undergrad yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. So let's just talk a bit, I guess, about law school in general. Now people want to know what your favorite thing is about it. Your tips for making friends. <laughs> All right. So my favorite thing about law school, that is a hard one, especially in my burned out phase right now. Yeah. Um, my favorite thing about law school, I guess, I mean, like, it is weird. Like I definitely like, I like say all the time and joke about how miserable I am. Is that a joke mm-hmm. or not? I mean, like I am a bit miserable. It makes you <laughs> pretty miserable. But like, also like when I look back on this time, like I think like I will like weirdly like think fondly of it. Um, yeah. I think, I, I guess my favorite part about law school is probably like my friends and they mm-hmm. like just make it. And like, there are some nice classes. And I think like I do, as much as I hate being stressed, I think I do kind of thrive in stress in a weird way. So I kind of, like the stress a little bit um Mm -hmm. as far as friends uh I got really lucky kind of so when I like went it was the first we had to like for our like convocation we had to go it was the most awkward thing they ever made us do they like put us all in a room no one knew each other and they like just made us mingle it was so uncomfortable so like I went and mingled with like this one girl who seemed nice and then like the next day like I thought we were gonna sit next to each other and like she didn't save me a seat and it was really awkward and then so like I this other girl I had like met like later on in the Mm -hmm. night um, she had an open seat and it was next to her and this other guy and I went and sat with them and that was now Bianca and Salon who have been like my best friends ever since law school um (laughs) yeah it like worked out really well Salon he we love him, but he's very awkward. The first thing he ever said to me was, hi, my name's Long. Can I have your number? And I was like, that is really, I, I mean, I don't really want to give you my number, but I gave him my number and <laughs> we have been like best friends since. So it worked out well. I got lucky. And then we kind of joke now that like, we like all like outsource more friends and like bring them into the group. So it's like a group effort of making more friends. Oh my gosh. But, um, I got lucky. I did not get that lucky in undergrad making friends, but law school, I did get lucky making friends. I don't, but yeah. That's so funny. I love that, that they were like some of the first people that you met. Yeah. You're still friends with. No, and we were all in the same section. So like we got like really close 1L. Yeah, I was really lucky. Yeah, no, I love that they do the sections in 1L just because I like can have those same friends in every class. And And I think the way they do that sorry to interrupt I was gonna no, say no no that's okay I think the way they do like the reason like maybe not the reason but like the design of that like forces you you've got to find at least one yeah. friend in your section you or someone you can tolerate like to talk yes to, you know? yeah agreed so. otherwise you'd just be like always sitting alone yeah exactly who are you gonna ask like if you miss class like who are you, yeah. notes are you gonna ask for exactly yeah 100 percent so, and then plus you have like kind of built in study groups too, because you're mm-hmm. in all the same classes. Yeah. Right? So if you like study together for one class, you can study mm-hmm. together for all of your classes. Exactly. It's perfect. Which is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you said you're not, you said it seems like you're always stressed. People want to know if you actually are ever not stressed in law school. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, I like, I that. don't I don't want to scare people and I think it's different for everyone um but I can't really name like a time 
that I'm ever not stressed. Um, like I think even when, like, even on like when we have like spring break, or as you know, like spring break or like Thanksgiving break or winter break, mm-hmm. like you're never I well actually winter break, I guess you can kind of relax. Yeah. Like spring break and like it's not real. <laughs> you're not not real, like you're still reading. And like I think the thing that like sucks for me, like being in law school and like what's hard mm-hmm. for me is like seeing my friends that aren't in law school, like I feel so like bitterly jealous of like people who have weekends because you really like I mean if you manage time like you can have like time to do stuff on the weekends of course but there's never like you can't take a full entire weekend off I mean I did that last week and actually and then I had the worst week ever last week because I was so behind and everything but I would say for the most part I'm pretty stressed it's supposed to chill out 3L but I think the reason I'm like more stressed now too is now I'm doing like TikTok and YouTube and school so I think that's made it like more stressful so maybe it does get less stressful I don't know but yeah I would say I'm pretty stressed (laughs) the majority of the time yeah but yeah it's kind of how it is in law school yeah Um, how do you kind of manage that that like how do you like manage to keep your mental health slightly sane while you're so stressed I think like the biggest thing for me is exercise like no matter if it's just like a little walk or like going mm-hmm. and doing elliptical or doing yoga, like that is like my outlet. And I think it's so important to have an outlet. And for me, mm-hmm. it's like getting my stress out, like on the elliptical or like going for like a long walk. Mm-hmm. Um, that really helps me. And also, like I said earlier, just like when I do feel like really, really, really stressed, like I just won't, like I'll let myself take a break. And this is like still hard for me to this day but I like try to like accept like I'm taking a break it's okay that I'm taking a break Mm -hmm. and like I'm going to relax right now and chill Mm -hmm. so I I guess like that's I allow myself like self-care time and like force myself to like do self-care I guess to force myself to chill out yeah Yeah. because you do have to like fully allow yourself be like we're going to take this break yeah you can't be thinking about what you think you're supposed to be doing Exactly. While you're relaxing or you're not actually relaxing. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I will say too, like, I feel like I, I'm making it sound too, like I'm like always doing work and that is not true at all. I've actually been really slacking this semester, but I think <laughs> the stress is almost more coming from the fact that I know I'm slacking and like I have yeah. work to do and I'm just not doing it, but yeah. 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 Um, and oh, do you have a job lined up after school then? Or are you also like applying for jobs right now? I don't have a job lined up right now. Um, I was talking, I actually talked to like a professor about this. Um, He was the first one I talked to about like social media at all because I um, was talking to him and like asking if he thinks it's like a bad idea to wait until after I get my bar results to apply. And he was like, as long as you can financially support yourself until then, like, yeah, it's fine. And I'm really, really lucky that like, thankful to all of my besties, like on TikTok and YouTube, I can financially support myself once law school ends. So like during that time after the bar, I'm just going to kind of like really focus on social media, like even more Mm -hmm. than I am now and save money and then like when my bar score gets back, I will, I mean, if I pass, I'll apply to jobs. If I don't pass, then we will be studying for the bar again. So I guess we'll see what happens then. But like, I'm going to wait until I get my bar results back to start applying. No, that's really nice to not have to like worry about applying. While yeah. You're also finishing school and studying for the bar. Yeah. A hundred percent. That's so nice. Because yeah. I loved that with undergrad. I took a gap year. Did you take a gap year and go right through? I didn't. I went straight okay. through, but yeah. Yeah. I so I loved, that. yeah, I loved having that time off like between undergrad and law school. So I didn't have to do my law school application. Yeah. In school. That's really nice. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. So this is like the same idea there. So then you can just focus on the bar. Exactly. Worry about the job after. So that's, yeah. I love that for you. That's fantastic. That's the plan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love Hi, Lorelai. Are you done barking? <laughs> She's getting antsy. She's like, you've been on the computer too long. Uh, for <laughs> okay, I'm going to set her free. Okay. Hello, love. Come on, come on free. She got tired of watching us talk on the podcast. <laughs> what kind of dog is she? She's a cavapoo. So she's cute. like this big. She's fluffy and brown. Oh, cute. Yeah. And she's still a baby, so she wants to play all the time. And how old is she? 
she just turned a year so she's like trained but she yeah still but like, to, like still very puppy mode yeah, yeah. puppy energy mode so yeah. we'll set her free to go terrorize the rest of the <laughs> <laughs> fun for her yes but let's see oh yes yeah, so we're talking about your plans for after graduation so those yes. sound amazing and then let's see I think that might be like it for like law school type things that people oh. ask let me see if I missed anything fun that people wanted to know about law school. <laughs> okay. Not that law school is very fun, but I yeah. think that's about it. Oh, just the last thing was people were wondering if you recommend living alone in law school. You got a couple questions about that, what your thoughts are yeah. about living alone. So I, I mean, I think it, it totally depends. There's a lot of benefits to living alone and a lot mm -hmm. of disadvantages as well. I mean, I think I will preface by saying that if it wasn't for my parents supporting me and helping with me with my rent right now, I yeah. would not be able to be living alone. And I'm really, yeah. really thankful that they did that mm -hmm. for me because that's like a huge privilege and I yeah. would not be living alone um, mm -hmm. without them, especially New York is so expensive. So I'm really, really grateful that I can live alone. And I think for me, it was important because I've had so many bad roommate experiences and I'm also mm -hmm. just very very type a if like anyone has noticed where I like I need <laughs> everything like clean and perfect all the time like I can't I get really stressed over when it's messy and I've had so many I every single time I've lived with like a lot of roommates I lived in a house of like five girls who had like three of them had their boyfriends living with them it was always so oh messy <laughs> and like it was kind of just me cleaning up after eight people all the time yeah. like, when you live in a messy place with like messy roommates like it's kind of like if you're the clean one like you're kind of just going to be cleaning up after everyone else like all the time yeah. so that was fun so that was like a big factor for me I think um and just also I feel like I've had if roommates who especially if they like were not in law school and you're living with someone who's not in law school who like doesn't yeah. understand like you need quiet time sometimes I think that yeah. would be really hard for me Mm -hmm. But I mean, there are obviously like disadvantages, like it is obviously way cheaper to live with roommates and mm -hmm. you don't, I don't really get that lonely living alone anymore. I think in the very beginning I did. Yeah. Um, but I think having maybe like if you live with another law student, it could be nice because you'd have someone there who could relate to you. And I think sometimes when I'm stressed, like I definitely do maybe isolate myself a little bit. So mm -hmm. I think having a roommate who like got what you were going through could be nice too yeah. yeah yeah that totally makes sense um and yeah it definitely is expensive yeah <laughs> it's so expensive yeah I have two roommates and one of them is in law school with me okay so it's kind of nice it's really nice because then we can study together and we actually have our first class together this semester oh, so nice so every single day our first class of the day is together so yeah. she gets me out the door on time because otherwise I'm late for everything that's so cute that's so nice. yeah so it's really nice to like have us to keep each other accountable yeah. but um and then our other roommate isn't in law school but I think if it was just me living with the one roommate that's not in law school I feel yeah. like that wouldn't work out well yeah. because we would just kind of be doing totally different things but because mm -hmm. two of us are in it and one isn't it's yeah. kind of nice that it's like we have law school and she can see that then because it's both of us yeah. But then she also keeps us in touch with the rest of the world. Yeah. So we nice. don't totally drown. In law yeah. School. Yeah. That's nice. That's yeah. Nice. Yeah. So definitely there's advantages and disadvantages to both. Because sometimes yeah. I agree. I do wish it was just me because then I'm like, oh, I cleaned it and it won't get messy again now until yeah. I make a mess. Exactly. Yeah. Or like when I need it quiet, it is quiet because I'm the only yeah. one here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So oh, yeah, perks to both. Yep. So it just, I guess it just depends on people's preference, whether you yeah. have like a study buddy living with you yeah, or definitely. you like your alone time. And I thought yeah. that would depend too, like if you're more introverted or extroverted. Yeah, definitely. Okay, well, that is it for law school questions. So we've got some fun questions that people sent in for okay. you. I'm excited. So, yeah, so the first one is simply what you're, favorite guilty pleasure food is after a long day my favorite guilty so this is controversial like very controversial especially because okay. I live in New York but I will stand by it my favorite guilty pleasure food and I will never take this back DiGiorno <laughs> stuffed crust pizza the DiGiorno four cheese stuffed crust pizza is the best <laughs> thing there is something about a DiGiorno 
I they now make personal ones too if I don't feel like I want to mm-hmm. do a full one so I do mm-hmm. sometimes I'll go full sometimes I'll go <laughs> mini but that is my guilty pleasure and then I pour like pepperoncini like juice over it it's the best thing in the entire world that is my guilty pleasure favorite thing or I'll order from Calexico I'll get a burrito from there those are like oh. my two favorite things I knew you were gonna say the DiGiorno's I've seen it in your TikTok <laughs> so good they're the best yes and when you started with it's gonna be controversial because of New York I was like she's about to say DiGiorno's I know, and I know people are going to disagree, but yeah. I I love DiGiorno. I will stand by that for the rest of my life. <laughs> DiGiorno is really good. I'm not going to get mad at you about it because I'm not even from New York, so I don't think I'm allowed to, like, stand on that ground. Safe space here, <laughs> yeah. Safe space here. You can love your DiGiornos. Yeah, perfect. Okay, and then some people wanted to know, where did you get Cleo and Luna from? So I got Cleo and Luna. It was a sad and happy story. So my first okay. cat I ever got, I like when I was a sophomore in college in Boston, I went to go get a kitten and I went to this shelter and saw this 12 year old cat in there named Squirt. And I like literally left the shelter. And then I like went back in because I like was like, no one's going to adopt her. And she seemed, yeah. she actually did not seem friendly, she, but she was just so scared. So I took her home and she was like the most special kitty I've ever had. I changed Aww. her name to Birdie Bella because like, She'd had the name Squirt for 12 years. I was like, I can't totally change it. We just yeah. modified her name a bit. Mm-hmm. But then she passed away right before law school started. And I was like, I don't, I didn't really feel ready to get two cats yet, but I knew like I wanted to get two because of law school. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like moving to New York by myself. It was going to be my first time living alone. So I was like, I definitely don't want to have it just be me. And my mom sent me a link at a shelter of Luna and Luna's sister so I like zoomed over to pick them up and when I got there like I was gonna get Luna and her sister who were in the same cage and then I was like walking around while I was like waiting for paperwork I think and I saw Cleo and she reminded me so much of my cat that had just passed away and she stuck her Mm -hmm. paw out through the cage and started purring at me and so I was like I cannot leave this woman yeah so then this is like my lowest I think the lowest thing I've ever done I took Cleo and I took Luna and I left Luna's sister and I felt so guilty about it and so because so I wouldn't live a guilt for the rest of my life my parents ended up adopting Luna's sister a week later because I literally was like I could not even I was about to go get back and get her and have three cats because I was like what is wrong with me so Luna's biological sister now lives at my parents house Mm -hmm. and um Cleo and Luna Cleo ended up having parasites the shelter didn't get rid of that took six months to get rid of because she gave them to Luna and I had to bathe them every time they used the litter box and bleach their litter box twice a day for six months it was a nightmare but it was worth it but um yeah oh my god it was a nightmare that definitely is a nightmare yeah my parents like we have cats at my parents house Mm -hmm. and three of them were kittens that we rescued like from our driveway they their mom like brought them to our driveway we have a fireplace they were like under the wood and so we kept them um we gave the mom to the shelter and she got adopted like right away because she was only like a year old so she was still young um but I don't know if you know this but once cats have kittens after a certain amount of time they want nothing to do with the kittens anymore and they start like eating them yeah they become no idea yeah Yeah. Whoa. so we kept the kittens and we gave the mom away we didn't want to but our dad didn't want all of them so we were like yeah. oh, let's keep the kittens yeah um, and they also ended up having like parasites for a bit and fleas so oh, my mom and my sister had to give them like a flea bath and they got so many cuts on them from it oh my god yeah I giving Cleo and oh. baths was like a nightmare but like yeah. it's so hard getting rid of parasites with cats because they lick each other like if you have two yes. cats who have them like mm-hmm. they will lick each other and like reinfect themselves immediately <laughs> so, yeah nightmare yeah. like my dog had a parasite after when I brought her to New York when I was looking for apartments oh, she picked up a parasite in New York she had giardia fun. um fun. and I was living with my parents for my year off and yeah. they have a dog as well so then every time she went to the bathroom outside, my mom would have to like water down that part of the yard. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. otherwise, like if Penny went and sniffed it, then but she, she would, would get it. Yep. She would get it too. So um, of course. so much yeah. fun. <laughs> yep. So fun. Yeah. Did you want two cats though? So they could entertain themselves? Is that why yeah. you wanted two of them? 
Yeah, just because I knew. So with Squirty Bella, I like did not get another cat with her because she was a um, very timid woman who just yeah, wanted to. She was a senior. She was an yeah, old lady. She was, she was an old lady who just, she was ready for her like retirement phase, chill phase. She yeah. didn't want anyone else around. But like, <laughs> I knew like getting kittens, like I being away f- at school all the time, like I would just feel so bad leaving. Like when I did have one cat, I felt so bad leaving her when I go to school. So like, Mm-hmm. Even now, like I'm away for the weekend and like, I feel terrible. And like, I almost cry. I do cry when I leave them because I feel Aww. so bad, but like, I know they're fine because like they have yeah. each other. So like, I, yeah. I just saw them on the pet cube sitting next to each other earlier today. And I was like, okay, that's good. So, so cute. So, I love yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I feel bad when I leave my dog to go to school. Yeah. Thankfully, that's- my schedule is not like too bad this semester. So she's only alone for like five hours a day. That's good. Yeah, yeah, but I still feel That's bad good. every time. I know it's the worst because you can't tell them like, "Hey, I'll be home in a few hours." Yeah. So I, I also got a pet camera recently for her, so I can watch her when I'm yeah. gone, and yeah, I can pet. talk through it. But I talked through mm-hmm. it one day, and she was so confused. I know they get so confused. Yeah. That's what Luna like. It's really. She, I don't think she really gets it. And so when I talk to it through, I have a, like always recording. So I like go back through the recordings and I'll see Luna like periodically just like looking into the camera during the day. Looking for you. Like, voice goes, but she doesn't like get what it is. It's so sad. Oh my god, that's so sad, but so cute at the same time. She's like looking for your voice. I know it's so sad. Oh my god. Animals are so sweet. I know. Could not live without them. I know me neither no I like I got my dog for law school so similar to how you were like I'm getting yeah. two cats for law school I was like I need a pet like I'm not gonna be able to I don't think I would yeah I don't think you can make it I don't know how people without pets make it yeah throughout law school. like having like it is literally a, like such a comfort to have like yeah. a little comfy thing to come home to that's cute yeah, 100%. I don't think my roommate would be like sane at all if I didn't have my dog. She was so excited when she that found out I was bringing you. my dog. Yeah, she was yeah. like, you're bringing a dog and I don't have to take care of it, but I get to play with it. Yeah, that is the time. dream. That is yeah. the dream. Yeah. So that's the dream and my roommates are living the dream. <laughs> Yeah, that is nice. I actually, I lived with roommates once who had a dog and I didn't have to like, actually, I would take it out sometimes for fun, but like didn't yeah. have the responsibility. That's all my roommate is. Yeah. Yeah. That's the best. It really is. The yeah. best. That's why I was an undergrad too. One of my roommates senior year had a dog and I would just get to take her for little walks sometimes. Yeah. It was so fun. But like yeah. you know, when you have to like do it at like six in the morning or seven in the morning. Exactly. But like middle of the day to take like a break yeah. from studying. So my roommates at class, I was like, oh yeah, I'll take her for a stroll. Yeah, exactly. It's the best. Yes. Yes. So definitely recommend getting pets for people in law yeah. school. 100%. Cats are easier, but if you want to be Very forced true. into walks, which is what yeah. I wanted. I wanted mm-hmm. to be forced to go outside. That yeah, is that so, is smart. That's smart. Yeah. So yeah. it depends what your purpose for the pet is. If you just want cuddles, cats, cats are great. Are good. Yeah, cats are good. But if you want forced exercise, get a dog. Absolutely, hundred <laughs> percent. Yes. Okay. And then people wanted to know: Are you vegetarian or are you vegan? Or are I'm you vegetarian. Okay. I I could not go vegan. I don't think I love cheese um but I've been vegetarian my parents were both vegetarian when I was born so I like kind of just I've never had meat so for me it's very normal but like I've grown up eating cheese and Mm -hmm. eggs and I I couldn't go I I love DiGiorno I couldn't have DiGiorno stuffed crust if I was vegan and that would be too much that would push me over the edge so I know the people should have known they shouldn't have even asked if you were exactly vegan. you love yeah. your DiGiorno's and your exactly. bagels with cream cheese that's, that's very true very that's another big thing for me bagels with cream cheese yeah, yeah. so I totally it. agree um I'm pescatarian right now I've gone vegetarian quite a few times but I just like it's so hard for me I'm like because I wasn't like I didn't grow up in a vegetarian yeah. family mm-hmm. I just did it for my own personal reasons and preferences so it's yeah. hard for me to like figure out how to eat like completely vegetarian without like having grown up with those meals. I think that would be so hard. Like I wouldn't know how to go yeah. vegan right now, nor yeah. could I. Oh my it's- God. I couldn't, I like cheese so much. Though. Yeah. Same. So I think when you haven't done it, like, that's why I feel like people are like, that must be so hard, but I'm like, I just, I don't know the difference, but like I, yeah. if I had grown up eating me, I'm sure it would be really hard because yeah. you have to figure everything mm-hmm. out. Yeah. yeah. I don't love meat anyway. But I just find it hard to like put a full meal together sometimes without a protein. Yeah. 
So that's yeah. why now I'm pescatarian. I'm like, it's a step in the right direction. Yeah, that's true. My parents are pescatarian, so yeah. I've never had fish, but for some, I don't know how I never had fish, even though they've been pescatarian since yeah. I was born, but yeah. They're, Maybe these little right. kids don't like the smell of fish. Yeah, that's you probably didn't want to eat it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's actually probably true. Yeah. So I'm pescatarian, so I get that. I could not go without the cheese. The oh, egg. Okay. That's so tough. It's easy to do the meat, I feel like, if you're not a big yeah. fan of meat. But and I have so many substitutes now, too. I mean, I'm yeah. sure they're not the same, but like at least there's something. Honestly, I'll say they're pretty good. As somebody that's really? in the substitutes and you sit eat meat. Yeah. On, some of them are like really, really close. To, okay. To realistic. So yeah. it's doable, but they can be expensive. So I yeah. think that's the turn away. That's very that true. Like meat, but want to switch over. Yeah. Um, like by Chloe is so expensive. Yeah. And like the beyond meat stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That stuff's really expensive too. So mm -hmm. one day my goal though, when I am a rich lawyer. <laughs> yes, exactly. I will go full vegetarian because I can afford all of the meat stuff. That is very that true. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So we have your eating habits. People wanted to know. Yes. I thought that was such a funny question. You know, that is fun. <laughs> like it's so random but fun. Yeah. Okay, we have another fun one. Where have you traveled? If you could travel anywhere overseas, where would it be? Or like, what's your favorite place that you've been at if you have been overseas? I think, I mean, I don't know. I, I can't think of a place like off the top of my head where I'm dying to go. I think there's so many. I think mm -hmm. my favorite place that I've traveled, my dad and I every November, except I guess for the past like two, three November, two November is because of COVID. Uh, we always go down to Costa Rica to go surfing every oh, November because so that's when the surfing is the best. So that's yeah. like, oh, that's my favorite place to go just because it's like a special fun time. And um, I love it there. So I think that's my favorite place. I don't know where I would pick to go. I don't like, I don't know. I, I have this new thing. Law school's made me really scared of planes. I've, I've flown my whole life and never had a problem with them. It's so weird. But like all of a sudden I've gotten like really like, well, it was actually my last plane I was on was a flight home from Costa Rica. And it was right before one all finals. And I had a panic attack on the plane for my first time ever. And now I'm like, I'm flying in two weeks to California to go skiing. And yeah. I am like so scared to get on a plane again, which is, but I think like the reason I can't think of where I want to go is because I'm like, that involves a flight, but yeah. Yeah, no, that's so interesting because I was actually talking to someone else recently and they were telling me how they were never scared of planes. But the past yeah. two years, like since COVID, and she's yeah. also in law school. So I guess COVID and law school, she's I, also now become afraid of planes. Okay. I swear it is a law school thing because I have, I think I have four friends in law school who never had a problem flying and all of them are terrified of it now. That's like, that's a good amount of people that I know at specifically my yeah. school. Now there's I, five people I know of. I, it's a weird, I don't know. Yeah. But. I wonder though, if it also is like kind of crossover with COVID though, because like yeah. you, when you started law school, your first year would have been in person or like yeah. most of your first year, like the end yeah. of it was remote. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if also it just does have to do with COVID kind of yeah. just like not used to like flying as much. I guess that could be it too. I think for me though, it started before COVID um, yeah. because I, I, I just got this weird claustrophobia in law school. I don't know what happened, but I think it's like a yeah. common thing, but yeah, I'm sure COVID probably plays a factor now too. Definitely. Yeah, I've always been afraid of planes, so it's the same for me now. Well, at least, <laughs> like, at least if you're used to it, I guess, is the, is the bright side. Yeah, but. I got used to flying a bit more in undergrad because I went to school in San Diego. Okay, so you had to so, fly. So I yeah. had to go back and forth because I'm from, like, southern New Hampshire, the Boston area. I'm, like, 40 minutes okay. outside of Boston. Yeah. So every time I'd want to come see my family, I'd have yeah. to fly. But then... Yeah. COVID hit and I didn't get on a plane for a year until they held my graduation year Younger. later and I'm like yeah. I hate them again now yeah so, no that's uh, I am so nervous I feel like the second the plane leaves like the gate I'm gonna be like turn this plane around I need to get off but I like got prescribed a little anxiety med I, I went to the doctor and they like gave me like three out of van for my like yeah. back and forth flight so I'm hoping that like yeah me out a little bit but of yeah. course not when reading that out of van can have adverse effects and I'm like oh my god but I'm just not gonna think about it oh my goodness so, yeah okay going off of that then actually people ask how you manage your anxiety and your panic attacks 
So we'll so, we'll get into it. I, yeah, that's a great segue. Um, <laughs> okay, first of all, I will start by saying like I've had OCD my whole life, hundred mm-hmm. percent. Like I think I can think back to like. I never realized this was OCD, but like when I was like six, I would like think whenever you drove by a police car, I would think like you have to think in your head, I love police, so you get arrested. So like, I think that was definitely OCD, but then I never had panic attacks until law school. And my first panic attack was in, um, what was it? Civil procedure. My first panic attack was her cold class. Yeah, because her cold calls were so intense and I was so scared of them. They were like an hour long and like I didn't get Civ Pro, like it did not make sense to me until the very end. So that's when I had my first panic attack. But I think what's really helped me now that I've become like an expert on panic attacks thanks to law school um, (laughs) is I always carry like when I go to school. I always have like peppermints or like some sour candy in your backpack because like the mm-hmm. taste can like distract your brain yes. and, like the panic. I've seen that tip. The sour yeah, candy. Yeah, it really. I always like used to have a bag of sour skittles in um, my bag, which everyone make fun of me for. But you pop a few sour skittles and it really does chill it you out. It brings you back. Yeah. Yeah, and also this was like a a weird one, but I feel like I um I like researched like and read a lot about like why you have panic attacks. And I think Mm -hmm. like understanding like, it's just like your body having like an inappropriate response and like releasing certain Mm -hmm. hormones. Is it hormones? I don't know, adrenaline, whatever it releases. I I don't know. Yeah, I hate science. So we're not gonna get into the science behind it, but like (laughs) the general idea of why it happens. Like now when I feel a panic attack coming on, I'm like, okay, this is just my brain thinking we're in danger, but we're not. So my brain's confused and actually everything is fine. And I like tell myself like, this is just a chemical reaction. Maybe, yeah. I don't know if that's correct, but like it's something happening in my brain that's yeah. like, I can stop. So I've been able to like halt a lot of panic attacks by kind of just like telling myself, this is a panic attack. You know, it's a panic attack yeah. and you can stop it. So that's helped me too. But I definitely probably should, I've had therapists in the past and I think I definitely mm-hmm. should get one again because my anxiety has been like skyrocketing lately. So yeah. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think their therapy is good, but yeah. 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 I'm in therapy right now. And my therapist, um, I've been with her since like June now, last June. And she actually yeah. explained the science behind panic attacks yeah, to me. Yeah. Because I, I, I was having that problem too, for like all of last year. Just, I never had panic attacks either. Like it's so weird. And then you have crazy. one and you're like, what and is then that? They just the first keep one's going on. Yeah. The first yeah. one is so scary. I was like, I'm dying of a heart attack. Yep. And like, then like when you have a panic attack somewhere, then then you're like, you associate it with that. Like I was like yeah. first year, I would like cry every day before school. Cause I was like, I'm gonna have a panic attack when I get to yeah. school. It was like so bad. Cause like, once you have it, like in a certain spot, mm-hmm. you're like, okay, this is where I have panic attacks now. Yeah. 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 Honestly. And they can happen in the same place. A lot of the time, because I kept having like panic attacks at work oh, yeah, and then no. I would just sit there I never had so like pan, for people that don't know panic attacks come in like different shapes and forms yeah so I never had the ones that would make me look like I was having a full blown oh, yeah, meltdown same. I was like the internal panic attack That's and I, I was am. like I, I was like I am having a heart attack right now and I am going to die so That's- I would just be sitting at work staring at my computer being like <laughs> that's exactly how I am too and it got to a point where like because uh, my friends would never know it was happening so I'd like text them on the computer yeah, the next exactly. and be like having a panic attack again and I would just pull up webkins actually my 1L year I did not oh pay God, attention God. in class at all I would just play webkins because I was like if I pay attention we're gonna have a panic attack but no I'm the same way like you can never tell I'm like just sitting there like yeah. nothing's wrong but yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah so wild but it's so crazy how they can just start and then I like know. Because like growing up, like, like you said, looking back, like I can see like, oh, I was definitely an anxious child. Like I 100% have anxiety. Now I learned I also have ADHD that was undiagnosed. I feel like I have ADHD too. I, I really do, but well, I've never been diagnosed. You might. I thought yeah. I had OCD and I do have, my therapist said I have anxiety with OCD tendencies. So I have like some okay. things that That's lean into the OCD realm, very which humorous. is very fun. Yeah. But um, then I learned that a lot of the things that I thought were like just me having like anxiety and OCD specifically are yeah. like because of my ADHD, the really? way that it like, yeah, the way that it being like untreated and not knowing it existed, like was making my brain work. So um, yeah, that was super interesting to find out. 
but yeah, crazy Weird. how when you yeah. learn about your mental health problems, I know you can get better. <laughs> oh, I know mine is all about. I I know I've been told very by many therapists that I uh, the reason I have raging OCD is because I am a control freak and I'm very aware of that and I think yeah. that's pretty clear. But yeah. the uh, I'll never change my, I, I, <laughs> I want to control everything all the time. And you just, I'm the same way. And it's, just, it's like tough and it's just like how your brain is. And that's yeah. just like how you've always been. And there's nothing you can do yep. about it. Yeah, I know it sucks, but yeah. whatever. Yeah, whatever. But yep. definitely therapy helps. So definitely, definitely helps hundred percent. Definitely, definitely yeah. recommend therapy. Also, if you need medication, not a bad thing, people. No, not at all. <laughs> I'm I, listening. I think I'm about to go back on some because my anxiety has been like, yeah, not not great lately. So I think 100% nothing wrong with going yeah. on. If you need them. No, so. it helps so much. My life has been so much better since I got on my like anti-anxiety med. I'm just like yeah. vibing out most of the time yeah. now. I'm like, it wow. Me, I I was on this in the past, but now I'm like, maybe I should go back. That sounds nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. seriously. And when I wasn't on it, I was like medication can't do anything for me I'll have panic attacks forever and I started That's taking it really it's just crazy I'm feeling inspired yeah I hope yeah. I did inspire you you really did so <laughs> you can do it again for sure yeah never hurts to try and you've done it before too so yeah yeah so, so it's not as scary then so I know I was like terrified to like mm-hmm. start medication but once you've yeah. done it once you kind of like know how it affects yeah. you it's not a big deal at all yeah it just yeah. makes you feel better that's like the yeah. only thing yes there are other it's like yeah, yeah it's like you can have like some side effects but then you probably yeah. need to be on a different one um, yeah but it mostly for people that don't know mostly like um anti-anxiety meds it's generally you go on an antidepressant it's an ssri yeah. and it just like raises your serotonin level so it's just like bringing you more level to where like your brain should be serotonin wise. Cause so. it's really, it's just a chemical imbalance in your yeah. brain. All You're just lacking a little serotonin and it just, yeah. you get a little boost. Exactly. <laughs> Which is nice. Everyone needs a yeah. little boost here and there. Yeah. Everybody needs so, a little boost. Yeah. Okay. We'll do a couple more fun questions and then we'll wrap up with our two segments, but we'll end on okay. a little fun note. All right. So we have. We're actually, we'll, we'll do one advice question. Somebody wants advice for you. They ask okay. if you have any advice for getting over a breakup. Okay. I am the queen of breakups. I swear. Okay. I, I think I've only broken up with someone once all other times been broken up with and control freak over here. I hate change <laughs> and I do not like anything that's out of my control and being broken up with is out of your control. And like all of them were devastating because like I was convinced I was going to marry like every single person who's broken up with me actually the last person who broke up with me I was like uh he literally told me he was gonna like propose to me like the night before he broke up with me he said he was proposed to me like a month later he was like I'm thinking about doing this and then he yeah anyway so I did not take that well that was my first semester of law school too that was really great so messed up of him it was he was a terrible person but um, I think like my biggest thing, and I stand by this because I have done it the wrong way a lot of times, and I'm finally like learned to do it the right way. I think the no contact rule is so important, and it's so hard because I've been in so many breakups where they always end the breakup, and they're like, "If you ever need anyone to talk to, like I'm still here for you." And then you like keep talking, but like don't yeah. keep talking; it will just like stop you from getting over them. And I yeah. feel like. Yeah. A lot of times, like you hold hope that you're going to get back together, but if someone's breaking up with you, if they decide, like if someone breaks up with you, then like, you don't want to get back together with them. I, in my opinion, unless it's for like a valid, like, I don't know. I, that's at least my philosophy. Like like, maybe if they were moving or something. Yeah. But like, if it's just like, they need space or something like the typical thing, I think that's just like, I don't like that. So I think instead of holding on to hope, just like accept it. I think that's like the big thing and block them and don't talk to them, like block them on all social media. I know there's been times I don't want to block them on Instagram because I want them to see my story, but every ex that has ever broken up with me has made like a different account to see my Instagram. So they'll still see your stories. No way. Block them. Yeah. Maybe I've just dated people who are oh a God, bit- They're obsessed with you. Yeah. I've had a, every 
a single ex has actually ended up coming back and talking to me later. So it, it's the no contact rule really makes them regret it eventually. If you do want regret for that, that should not be your main goal. But I also think like the, the hardest thing for me, at least is I always feel so alone. And like, I feel like I'm the only one going through it. So I always like will watch YouTube videos of like other people like doing breakup story times, because for me, at least, it really helps. Yeah. Because you can see other people like talking about their breakups and like relate to them and like see that like they got over it or so not even if they got over it, but like someone else is going through it. And like, you're not yeah. the only one going through it. Cause I think it really does sometimes feel like you're the only one going through it. Um, yeah. And then I think just like making sure like you do force yourself to like going for a walk, like doing some kind of exercise that like forces like serotonin like that really helps too serotonin is so important. yeah very important so anything and obviously like I was talking about this like earlier on a TikTok I think but like I think the advice to hang out with friends is like super good advice but I know for me that always made me feel really bad because I feel like I definitely have been in a lot of toxic relationships where I come out with like no friends so like oh no like, yeah so I feel like there's been times where I feel like I don't have that many friends uh, I mean luckily my best friend has always been there but I feel like what a best friend is for <laughs> yeah exactly but there's like I I think finding other ways to like I think finding ways that you're okay to be by yourself too like not just relying on friends I think like finding things like doing things by yourself and like planning like fun little trips and stuff to do on your yeah. own can really help mm -hmm. too so yeah. that's my advice. I, I think I, I covered everything. I yeah. love that. I think that was great advice. Like hanging out with friends can be good, but you do need to like part of the breakup is you like learning to be on your own again. Mm -hmm. so, 100%. I love that. Yeah. And I guess my last thing too, sorry, is that you should like try. This is what got me through my last one is like every single breakup usually leads to some sort of blow up. Like I feel like I would be like, yeah. 30 stages behind in life if I had like if I was still together with like my boyfriend like five boyfriends down the line like I would like be in such a different place in my life so you kind of have to like think of it as like an exciting new chapter which is really hard to do but if you can force yeah. your brain to think like this is going to lead me to something better because it will like that yeah. really way of thinking helps too yeah but, yeah beautifully said I loved it thank you thank You're you <laughs> So I'd like, we're actually going to do one more advice question. Okay. I think this will be a quicker one. Somebody wants to know how you deal with like self-esteem body image issues and like not comparing yourself to other people. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Um, I definitely struggle with that, especially because I think as most people can say, I gained a little bit of weight over quarantine and like Everybody still, did. yep. <laughs> which is totally fine. And mm -hmm. I think like there is like your body's always going to fluctuate and I don't mm -hmm. think there's anything wrong with that, but it definitely is hard. Like when I look at pictures of myself, like two years ago, I'm like, wow. But like, I think what helps me is like, I focus more on like how I feel now, rather than like exactly what I look like. And like, I yeah. definitely in high school, I feel like I was so restrictive and like, just kind of miserable, like actually mm -hmm. miserable. And like, if I like weigh a little more and don't have like the world's most perfect body, but like I'm happy, I think like that's more important. And like mm -hmm. the Giorno pizza circling back again, like that makes me so happy. Yeah. So like, that's, I, I think it's more like just about, I focus on how I feel now more and like, yeah try not to compare yourself to others because like everyone face tunes on Instagram, everyone edits yeah. their bodies on Instagram. Like you can't, I don't know. And even if they're not like everyone is perfect in their own, like it's cheesy, yeah. but it really like you have your own body shape and your own, yeah. you just you can't compare yourself to other people because no. everyone has a different body type. And yeah, no, so true. Like everybody has a different natural body shape. Like if yeah. we all ate like exactly. the same amount of calories, yeah. like we would, yeah. we would all be different shapes and sizes. Yeah, exactly. Like it's, it's like very genetic and like, you can't compare yourself like the Kardashians are an extreme, but <laughs> don't like compare yourselves to their body types. And like some of them have done like plastic surgery and stuff. So like yeah. you also just don't know. Yeah. Like looking at someone, you don't know if they have had like plastic surgery. Like maybe their butt's even fake. You don't yeah. know. Maybe it's not exactly. like actually attainable. 
Yeah. Okay, so exactly. that has it at plastic surgery. I think that's what's made it so hard too, is like, I do love watching the Kardashians, but I think like a mm-hmm. huge problem I have is just like, the, like, I just wish they would just like say, like, there's nothing wrong with getting plastic surgery, yeah. but when you don't say you've had it and you make people think that like, that's puberty that made you mature. It's hurting the like body. younger. Yeah. Ages. Yeah. No, I totally yeah. agree. I have no problem if you want to get plastic surgery, like it's your body, yeah. get plastic surgery if you want. You want bigger boobs, get them. You exactly. want a bigger butt, get them. Yeah. But just be honest about it so exactly. that it's not like harming teenagers and like middle schoolers' views of like what they should look like. Oh, and like what is up. actually, like you said, like attainable. Like, cause that does yeah. make you, like you said that it's attainable and it's literally yeah. not. And it's not attainable. Like they paid a yeah. lot of money to do that, which is fine, yeah. but you're not going to get that without paying a lot of money for it. Then. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Yeah. I love the um, the people on TikTok and Instagram that will post pictures that are like, this is what my photos look like edited. Yeah. And then this is what yeah, it looks those. like when I like relax my body. Um, yeah. Or like I follow this girl named Clara on TikTok. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen her. I think her at is like Clara and herself. I'm not and sure. Actually, she's she- re- she she recovered from an eating disorder she had like kind of short brown hair okay yeah I know who you're talking about yeah so she has short brown hair and she'll post pictures or videos sorry before and after she eats yeah I love those I have seen her I love those I love those and they're just so sweet I'm like that's just like such a great thing to put out there yeah especially like I have a sister that's 13 so Mm -hmm. um and like I can see in her when she's like oh like I shouldn't eat more and I'm like no like if yeah. you want to eat, like, just you should. eat. Yeah. So I love that we have people out there, like, putting things like that now because, like, it is so many people my sister's age on TikTok. Like, TikTok is what know. they're growing up with. Yeah. I, so, that's, yeah. I couldn't so, imagine. Yeah. So definitely, there's, like, great people to follow, like, to that question that the person had for you. There's great people to follow on TikTok that will help, like, yeah, get that in your brain, that it's more about, like, eating what makes you happy. Than yeah. like how you look. It's more about I agree. that. 100% I agree. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That was some great advice you had there. Yeah. So we'll just do two more fun questions. Okay. And then we will do the um two quick segments. So I would good. like to know your favorite clothing stores to shop at. <sighs> That's like a hard one. I feel like I don't really have any. I mean, I guess I love, well, I love Aritzia, but I feel like I haven't like the past few times I went to shop there I haven't really loved anything but I guess Aritzia I like Revolve because there's like just so many different things and you can use mm-hmm. I think it's like the discount code candy like it always works to get 10% off oh which my is God, no way <laughs> I always use that um and what else do I shop I don't know I feel like I I guess it's mainly probably Revolve Aritzia and I don't know. I can't really, I can't think right now. I guess those are probably the big two. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. And then last fun question. What YouTube channels do you like to watch? Other Uh, than yourself, of course. (laughs) Oh yeah. I'm watching myself all the time. All the time. (laughs) I love Bailey Sarian um, and I love Kendall Ray. They're both like true crime. Um, I love like yeah I love listening to like story times but like Mm -hmm. especially true crime I love so I like will always listen to them on like a drive or like when I'm like on the electrical or something I love that Mm -hmm. um and yeah I think those would be like my top two youtubers who I love okay love it and then last question how do you do everything with so much ease that people want to know it's just a lifestyle you've just got it's, it's a mentality like I said uh-huh. it's a perspective I choose I choose to believe I'm doing everything with ease and, and mm-hmm. in turn I do everything with ease it's just it's a lifestyle I love it's a lifestyle yeah. that is a great answer yeah okay that was amazing <laughs> so we're going to do our two little segments that you all know about so mm-hmm. hmm. We'll do that. How to be a better person one first, so we can end okay. with on New York note. So, do you have a tip for the people today? So, 
I think my tip of how to be a better person is I think a cause that is like a really good thing to donate to if you can is Equal Justice Initiative. I love them and um, I think that that is a great cause to put money towards, but I think even just um, more New York related, I guess, I always like make sure like whenever I'm like walking home or something, I will always like, if there's someone like on the street who like can't afford a meal or something like going in and like grabbing someone like a food like some food that they want and yeah. water that's like a really easy mm-hmm. way to like kind of pay it forward and like give back to like people in the community I love that that's so sweet and go inside and go yeah. buy them something my roommate told me that she bought Chick-fil-a for a homeless man one day he said hey I just really want a Chick-fil-a sandwich so she wanted yeah. oh that's some great. Chick-fil-a that breaks my heart. I was walking home the other night and there was a guy who he was like my age and he like literally was just like, I'm so hungry right now. Like I haven't eaten in three days. Could you please like get me food from McDonald's? And like that, that literally like it was the saddest. I hate that. I just, I wish yeah. everyone could live in a warm, happy home yeah. with like food. It's so like, that's such like a basic yeah. need that so many people don't have, which is awful. Yeah, I know it is awful we need to get some like better we need to get some better programs yeah and it's gonna take a lot of work but I'm hoping we will see it in the next I hope like, too. decade or so that is yeah. my hope <laughs> yeah um, same I'll give yeah I'll give a tip for today too mine is going to be more geared towards law students today I don't normally do a law student based one but um I'll say that if you're looking at summer internships for like your first year your first year isn't as important in terms of like trying to work at like a big firm or something if that's what you want to do in the long term. So if you're able to um, work for like a nonprofit or something, yeah, that's like definitely. a good cause that you care about or that's going to like help the city or like even the homeless people we're talking about. Like there yeah. are organizations that focus on helping those people. So mm-hmm. if you're able to volunteer for one of those programs, if you're legal yeah. services for the summer, and that's like, like a great way to spend your summer. Even in like, I know, even if you think like you can't put something like that in IP, I know there's yeah. like a really good, I think it's in the Bronx. They have a really good IP program um, that I almost interned at where like mm-hmm. they offer um, like I, free IP services to like really small, like startup oh, brands yeah. who can't afford mm-hmm. like IP um, yeah. like advice and stuff. So I think like yeah. even like thinking like you can really find like a good nonprofit in like any yeah any field Um, yeah yeah any fields yeah that's so true so anyone looking for an internship you can find a good nonprofit. yeah yeah okay and then our last segment as always is a fun thing to do in new york would you like to go first or do you want me to go first you can go first okay so i cannot remember the name of this place but i'm oh wait maybe i'll say what i think the name is i could be wrong so there is a speakeasy in new york city that serves the cocktails in teacups and teapots. I like, I want to say it's the Garrett, but I don't think it is. I think that's a different place my roommate wants to go to. But mm-hmm. if you just look up New York City speakeasy teacups and teapots, it'll come up. Um, and I haven't been yet with my roommates, but we're trying to go to speakeasy tonight. So we might go to that one. Mm-hmm. But so um, look up that speakeasy if you're here in New York. It looks like so much fun. That sounds so fun. That actually made me um, kind of change mine because I was, that okay. reminds me of um, my best friends in my favorite place. They have like mm-hmm. so many different like events they do. It's yeah. called the McKittrick Hotel. Um, okay. And it's like the same. So the first time we went, they do like, it's like a hotel that's supposed to be like in the 1930s, 1945. Mm-hmm. And they have like a bunch of different things you can do. So they have this thing called Sleep No More, which is like this two hour, like it's almost like an immersive play kind of. It's um, like all Broadway people who like are like, you just like walk around this hotel and it's supposed to be like this really like disturbed hotel in like the 1940s, which sounds really creepy and it is creepy, but it's so cool. And then you can go sit in like the bar and like order a drink. It sounds weird, but it's like actually so cool and so fun. My best friend and I also went to a magic show there. They have so many fun, cool things. Um, So, Mm -hmm. and that's, where is that? I, it's near West 25th. Well, I know, 
It's on the west side, <laughs> somewhere near West 25th, I know. So I can't, okay. I can't see the exact place, but it's it's really, that's fun. And then I think my other one that I was going to say is like mm-hmm. less going out, but like I love just like going for a walk. This costs no money at all. Just like going for a walk in the Brooklyn Bridge Park. Not the Brooklyn Bridge because the Brooklyn Bridge is miserable to walk across. Like when there's <laughs> if it's not like seven a.m. But the Brooklyn yeah. Bridge Park is so nice and pretty and like along the water and there's places to have picnics when mm-hmm. it's warm out and like they have little lemonade trucks and stuff. It's so cute and nice. So, so I love that's that. That's so cute. I'm actually going into Brooklyn tomorrow morning. So yeah. we were trying to figure out where to go. So maybe we'll take a walk. It's the, the best. Park. It's the best. And you should definitely go to La Bagel Delight in Brooklyn. Best okay. bagel place. Okay, I do love a good bagel. So yeah. maybe I'll hit up both of those spots tomorrow. Yeah, when I'm you should. You should. <laughs> okay. All right. So that is the episode, everyone. And Kelly, would you like to tell people where they can follow you? You guys can follow me on TikTok. Um, my TikTok is OK Kelly. And then Instagram is just my name with an underscore Kelly Wilson. And YouTube. I think you can just search Callie Wilson. I should come up for Callie Wilson on YouTube. I don't actually know my username on YouTube, but I imagine it's Callie Wilson. Yeah, I would think so. That would make so, sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you, you guys know you can follow the podcast, Legally Couture Podcast on Instagram and TikTok now. I will be honest, there's not that many TikToks on it yet because it's new, but we are on both. And then you can follow me at erin.lindsay13 on TikTok and Instagram. And we do have a YouTube channel that I will post the episodes on. So you can look up the Week Couture Podcast. It's all linked on the Instagram though. So you can just go through that. That's easier to find the YouTube channel. <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for coming, Callie. So much Thank you fun. for having me. This yes. was so fun. Yes. Okay. Bye, everyone. <laughs>